Hi guys. So I have been wanting to make a more in-depth relationship related video and I figured that since I'm in Vegas and since the lighting here is so much better and since I have time tonight, I might as well record this where I won't have any distractions like my computer. I was in the middle of watching a movie, but you know what? It's not that interesting to me. So I wanted to shoot this and get it out of the way. So in the past, I've always been a little wary about talking about relationships, mainly because I want to respect the other party and not go too into detail about intimate problems that we had. So instead of delving into that, I figured I would touch upon a few topics that are relationships related and I would use my own experiences to talk about and discuss through it. So the first one is actually one that probably takes a fair amount of accountability and it's basically what did I do wrong in my previous relationships or stuff I regretted. So the first one is actually not good. Um, it definitely makes me feel pretty poorly from doing this, but I'll just say it and get it out of the way first and then we'll talk about it. So let's just do a little background first. So I would say that I have dated five people, I believe. It gets a little confusing at times because there have been people online that I would get close to, but I find it very difficult to label them a boyfriend if they were brief or if I never really met them in person, that type of thing. So my first boyfriend was someone I met on WOW and I dated him, e-dated I would say, for a year, a little bit over a year and we met twice in person. My next boyfriend was during my college years, later college years, I'd say junior or senior year. And then my third boyfriend was my first boyfriend out of college. So. This was during my first job, so I'd say I was around 21 to 22 years old. And then my next boyfriend after that was actually my last one. One, two, three, four. Oh, so I've only had four boyfriends. That's interesting. <laughs> the fourth one is the one that I met off Dota. And let's get to it. So, like I mentioned earlier, this first thing that I did wrong is not something I'm proud of at all. So basically, during my second relationship, towards the end, we were breaking up or having really big problems and I wanted to break up. And from what I can remember during this argument, he was really asking me for reasons why I wanted to break up. And of course, during that age, I didn't know that you didn't really need a reason, right? If you don't want to be with someone anymore, you don't have to justify it for them. So he was pestering me a lot. And I think during that time when we were having our problems, I was starting to think about attraction, physical attraction. And I was thinking about the fact that I didn't think that I was physically attracted to him anymore. So because I had thought about that previously and he was nagging me so much about providing him a reason, I stupidly told him that I wasn't physically attracted to him anymore and I specified his face. So I will say that that's a really bad thing to say to someone, never say that to someone because it's just really not nice, it hurts people pretty deeply and I feel like it could cause some confidence issues for them in the future. So I know it's really not a good thing to say to someone and honestly, I don't really think I meant it in the way that he received it because we all know that physical attraction is very important in relationships and I think it is also very well possible to lose that attraction towards someone as time passes. So that is pretty much I think what I was trying to allude to but I conveyed it to him very poorly that he thought I just called him ugly so I don't feel great about that one. And I do think he was probably pretty bitter about it because he wrote a comment on Reddit several years ago trashing me for saying that to him and well, I don't blame him for that. So the next one is definitely something I think about from time to time because I feel very bad about it and I 
don't know if I handled it the right way. So my fourth boyfriend, my last one. Let me just give a little backstory and say that I've never really dated someone with a good career. My first boyfriend that I met off WOW, he is the exception, but he was also my first boyfriend and I was young and it didn't last super long. So afterwards, all my other ones were the ones that I was more familiar with and those were the ones that were more recent. So I recognized during these relationships that the fact that my boyfriend never had a good career was bothersome to me. Either they didn't have a career, their career wasn't where they wanted it to be and they were kind of unhappy about it, or they just weren't really doing much with their life. Like they were kind of maybe letting their parents pay for their life and they weren't really succeeding or having the motivation or they didn't even have a clear idea of what they wanted to do. So during my last relationship, I remembered that feeling of not really being pleased about where his career was and the thing is I was having a lot of conflict in my mind about whether I should tell him because I knew that I wanted to be honest with him and that I wanted to be open and tell him what bothered me but something like this is so sensitive because it directly involves him and like his position in life and that can be very difficult to change for someone and depending on you know their state of mind they might take it very poorly as well so I just remembered bringing it up to him and it was very hard to do so but I feel like I was delicate about it but at the same time I remember our conversation being very emotional and he was crying when we were talking about it and I was crying because I didn't like making him feel that way but I just felt compelled to tell him because I wanted to be honest so that's something that I honestly even now have a little bit of trouble understanding what the best course of action is because I do think that if I just you know stayed quiet and let it stew inside that's not necessarily the best thing to do either <clears throat> what the fuck? My phlegm is so annoying today. Sorry. Telling him also though kind of leads to, you know, unhappiness or sadness between you guys and maybe though after those emotions pass, you guys can discuss it and move on to something better. So maybe what I did wasn't the worst thing in the world. But even now when I think back to that moment we had together, it just makes me sad because it felt like I was doing a cruel thing to him by making him feel that way. Like I felt like I was telling him that I was disappointed in him, but that's not exactly true. I just wanted to tell him that this aspect bothers me and I'm sorry that it does. Like I wish it didn't, but it does. And yeah, that is just one of them. So the next one is something that I actually recognize is something I feel like I inherited from my dad. Basically, when I was a kid, I just remembered any time I was studying for a test, I would study, right? And then I would go to my dad and I would ask him to test me, ask me questions, and I'll try to answer them. And any time I didn't know the answer to a question, he would get flustered, he would get frustrated, and he would be like, what the fuck, weren't were you studying? Like, why don't you know the answer? He would kind of react in that way. Obviously, he would not curse at me. I was kind of, you know, just saying whatever. But he would get kind of pissed off and he would kind of make you feel bad for not knowing the answer. So I realized that I picked up on this trait throughout the years and it kind of sucked to be that way but I don't think I had the awareness at those ages to recognize that I was being a bitch and unfortunately I did treat people poorly because of it so I'd say for my last boyfriend, number four, um, there were a few times that I can remember that I treated him this way and it makes me cringe thinking about it because I nowadays I just feel like it's the worst thing for your significant other to you know put you down when you're just trying to get help, right? So for example, he started playing WoW to try it out and we were playing together. So I remembered that when we were doing dungeons together and he would ask me about mechanics, 
I would just act like, why don't you know this? You should know this. And then I would not really help him. And that's just something that I feel so badly about now when I think back to it because, you know, we're playing together. We should be having fun. I should not be like trying to be a miss know it all and not helping him and also making him feel bad for not knowing. It's just a whole bad combination. And aside from that, there was also other instances where he was taking a few months course at Rutgers to try to learn coding to see if he could get into that field for a job. So sometimes he would come to me for help and I would pretty much behave the same way, sort of. I would start off trying to help him, but he wouldn't understand it. And then I would have a hard time explaining it to him for him to understand it. And then I would start to act that way. And the thing is now I certainly understand how hard coding can be to understand because even at work, there are times where my coworker is trying to explain the task to me and he explains it the first time and I'm like, what? And then he explains it to me the second time and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm starting to understand it a little bit more. Then the third time he explains it, Every single time he explains it too, it's like slightly different. He like crafts it a little differently. And then I finally managed to understand the entire picture to do the work. But another thing to keep in mind is that he was just learning coding at this time. So obviously everything is super, super confusing and I needed to have more understanding because I remember my college years were not good at all. I struggled through college pretty hard. I really felt like I was an idiot. I felt so stupid during college because I didn't understand a lot of the schoolwork. I didn't understand a lot of the material. And it was kind of similar to senior year of high school. That was when I first started learning how to code. And I remember specifically that year, I really needed to ask for help a lot of times. So nowadays, somehow over the years, it started clicking for me and I feel like I'm pretty decent as a programmer now, but back then it was very hard for me. So I needed to be more understanding and the fact that he would come to me for help and I would try to help, but eventually make him feel bad just makes me feel like shit. And I would like to think, I would hope that nowadays if someone came to me for that, I would not treat them that way. But still, when I think back to those times, it makes me sad to know that I treated them that way. Okay, so the last one is not actually in relation to the other party, but more so myself. So something that I started encountering, which I think is normal, but I was very confused by it, is that after the passion fades from your relationship, it starts to feel like friends who have sex, right? So I think that during my yeah, actually it started straight up in my second relationship. I think that once I noticed that feeling faded, I started to panic a little bit in my mind. I would think, do I even like him like this way anymore? Should I even stay with him anymore? I, where, like, why do I feel very little towards him now? Or like, maybe I was getting confused about it, I don't know. But I feel like once that passion suddenly went away, my mind kind of went a little crazy and I started getting super worried about whether I still like them, do I still love them, uh, should we continue this relationship? Like, I just felt very confused. Unfortunately, during my second relationship, um, I basically, I think we dated for like eight months or something. And I remember that I went to Taiwan for the summer and we were still talking a lot as much as we could during the time difference while I was there and it was fine but I just remembered when I came back I didn't know what I was feeling I think that my confusion with all of that may have made me decide to break up with him even if I might not have wanted to I don't know it's really hard to say because I don't remember that breakup being hard for me I think it was for him, but I just didn't know what to do with that feeling of confusion about how to transition into a relationship when the passion goes away. So I broke up with him for that. 
And then I remember during my third relationship, the next one, I told my boyfriend that worry of mine about the passion fading thing because that was what I had dealt with in my previous relationship. And I think I recognized that that thought concerned me a lot. So that wasn't really a concern for the third relationship because we ended it because it was a toxic relationship. But that was just something that I often thought about and I suppose I acted on it in my second relationship. But it's something that often comes up in my mind. It's very hard to wrap your head around it sometimes because I think especially in long-term relationships, there were always there will always be times where it goes to a, a place where you don't feel a ton of love for each other. Maybe you have to work through things, but I've never been in a relationship long enough. I have never been in a long-term relationship. I'd say my longest is one year and a half, which isn't short, but I've never been in a relationship for years. So it's very hard for me to say how I would be like in a long-term relationship and how this specific issue would apply to that scenario. All right, the next topic I want to discuss is what I want out of a relationship. And I don't think this is going to be anything unusual. I feel like this is probably common for a lot of people, but maybe I can provide a little more depth into some of these. So the first one I think is pretty obvious. I would love to share my interests with somebody. I think the main difference between me and a ton of other people is the fact that even though I would love to share my interests with people, I am perfectly content with enjoying my interests by myself. So for example, going to TI, yes, I am going there and enjoying and watching the games in a stadium with a ton of Dota fans, but those Dota fans don't enhance my experience. I lied. They do, mainly during the cheering, but I don't go there to try to socialize. I go there for me, watch the game, some cheering might make me feel energized, and then some cheering might make me feel sad, especially if it's not a team I care about. There's stuff like that, and for example, like me doing road trips. So a lot of people would not do road trips on their own because they feel like they would enjoy it so much better with somebody else. And I always find that to be, I don't know, sometimes counterproductive because I feel like they can still enjoy it, but if they're there by themselves, they might end up pining for somebody else to be there the whole time, maybe. But if they actually focused on maybe doing things for themselves, then maybe they would still find it worthwhile. I feel like with the right person, enjoying certain things together would be that much more enjoyable. Something I personally really love to do is to discuss and analyze things, right? So for movies, I like to look deep into certain things that I pick up on. Why did this character do this? Why did the director shoot it like this? Why? are there these symbols in movies like for example even a movie like us that i didn't like there was something that was common throughout the movie you would see people standing like this in certain scenes there was blood dripping from someone's hand and i remember when i was talking to my co-workers about it because they mentioned seeing it in theaters so when i brought it up i brought up that act and i was like why do you think that is and something very common amongst most people is they won't pick up on stuff like that or they don't care about details like that so that can be a little tough for me because i end up not wanting to discuss movies as much with certain people because i just know that they're not going to care about the details and that i won't get a good answer or discussion out of them so i feel like if someone was as passionate about that stuff as i was even for stuff like Dota tournaments, I would love to discuss decision making, spell usage, all of that stuff, um, what items they decided to go and why, which might have been a better item, or what would you have gone, just discussions like that. I would really greatly enjoy that, and I guess that in itself isn't specific to a significant other. Even a friend can provide that for you. But maybe the fact that it's a significant other that has that level of uh, interest in it makes it even better. 
I'd say the main way that I view a relationship right now is that it's only there to enhance your life, but if it's not part of the equation, then your life should be pretty great on its own. So I feel like if I approached a relationship now, it would be so different than in the past because I feel like right now I have a really good amount of awareness and I feel like I would approach a relationship so differently than I used to. So I'm very curious about what I would behave like or how I would react to stuff, would I be super understanding, would I be good at compromise. The thing is, I'm happy on a daily basis. I'm very pleased with my life so far. So I feel like that's a really great foundation to have a relationship on. But if it doesn't happen anytime soon, I'm perfectly content with that. All right, so next I'm gonna discuss the things I noticed liking in relationships. So the first one is obvious. I like to game together with my significant other. But I have mentioned in the past that I am very competitive. So there were times in the past where I kind of struggled a little bit when my significant other wasn't as skilled as I was at a game. And I know that sounds elitist and all that, but I am admitting that that's a problem that I have. And I feel like the competitor in me can find it very difficult to play with someone that's less skilled and I feel like there were times with my second boyfriend, we would be playing League of Legends together. So during college, I played a lot of League of Legends before I transitioned into Dota. And I played a lot of games with him. But I remember during that time, his friend's brother played League a lot as well. And he was very good at it. So I remember I would be playing with my boyfriend and friends. And then if he was around, I feel like I'd rather play with him because he was a better player and he was also willing to duo queue for ranked and stuff. So I found that more appealing because it would be more skilled players and also playing with someone at a higher skill level. So I always like that sort of environment. Um, I feel like most people do tend to just want to play with friends and have fun and that's fine. I like my dose of challenging and complicated play, but at the same time, I feel like that is fun for me because I'm learning, I'm being challenged, and it's a tough game, and that always makes it even more exciting to me. Um, I do admit, obviously, playing with friends can be fun and everything, but that was a recipe for disaster for me. It tends to be because I actually, at the very beginning of my time in Dota, I was introduced by someone I knew from New York. This individual I met from a summer camp several years prior and we somehow managed to keep in touch and he basically introduced me to Dota and his friends who played. So whenever I played during that time, we were often playing in a five stack and we all played together. And it was fun, but I remember always being frustrated if we lost like five games in a row. Maybe someone was playing poorly, maybe someone didn't really pick the right heroes, or maybe we were just not, you know, picking right team comps and being coordinated and stuff like that. So I always remember being frustrated. I would get really pissy and maybe complain a little bit. And eventually I stopped playing with them. And that's very common for me in terms of I would play with someone for a while and then get frustrated when we're not playing as well as we could be or they're not taking it as seriously and I would just stop playing with them. So the thing is, with my fourth boyfriend, my last boyfriend, we actually ended up landing together playing Dota at my apartment pretty often because the thing is I upgraded my computer and I had my old computer that I kept at my apartment and it did kind of suck that he was using an inferior computer than my main one, obviously, but I still thought it was pretty great that we were able to be in the same room and playing together because I have only ever done that once before and it was actually with those five individuals from Dota at the very beginning. I have a picture actually on my Instagram. It's like my first or second post ever on my account and basically they came over from New York he brought their desktops 
and we played on my dining room table in New Jersey. And the funny thing is, we organized this while my parents were out of town, which is very rare, but they came over and we played Dota together and it was so much fun. And I really, really would love to land with someone again, even if it's not a significant other. I think that's so much fun being able to play in person next to each other. So similar to what I discussed earlier, I really like discussing details for movies and stuff. And I would love it if whoever I was dating preferred the independent film types, which are the ones that I tend to love nowadays. So I really like to discuss and analyze. And another thing is I would love it if my significant other could be on the same level as me when it comes to knowing actors, actresses, directors, and all of that stuff because I love watching a movie and I'll be like, oh shit, that's Vince Vaughn. And I actually just did that earlier. I was watching Rudy right now and I saw this football player and I was like, Ooh, that looks like Vince Vaughn, his face for sure. And it's a young Vince Vaughn in a super old ass movie. And I'm really good at spotting actors like that. So if I'm able to spot someone and I can share that moment with someone, I think that would be pretty cool. But aside from that, like when I talk about movies I'm looking forward to watching and I cite an actor as a reason, and if my significant other knows several movies by that actor off the top of their head, that would be amazing. We could just, you know, discuss things endlessly or like go back and forth and it would be awesome. <laughs> So this one wasn't something I started thinking about much until recently, which makes sense because nowadays, the past year, I've ridden my motorcycle way more than ever the four years or something I owned it in New Jersey. So whenever I see people riding around here in groups or even in twos, I think about how amazing it would be to ride with my boyfriend if I ever had the chance because I have never ridden with someone before. I don't want to ride with a stranger. I don't want to ride with a meetup group. I want it to be someone that I know well and that I have a very close connection with and I feel like it would be so much fun. So that's something that I would love to do in the future. But the odd thing is I tend to feel like the person that I'm going to end up dating is going to have no interest in motorcycles. So I feel like that might not ever happen. Who knows though? But um, yeah, everyone I've ever dated, don't think they've had any interest. And actually I did buy my motorcycle. I think I did have it during my second relationship. I can't remember. But yeah, I, I'd say for like 75% of my relationship durations, I did own one. So none of them just showed interest in wanting to get their license and all of that. I know it's like a big deal to go through the steps of getting your license and then buying a motorcycle. Like that's expensive, right? So you have to be really determined and none of them had the interest. This last one is something that I feel like would be nice to share together, but I guess it doesn't have to be that important. It's just a nice to have. But I've noticed that if I tend to spend time with people that don't appreciate stuff like nature or the beauty from the simple world around us, sometimes that might be a little disappointing internally. Like it's a light disappointment, but it does prevent me from being myself at times. So for example, when I went to Joshua Tree with my brother, there were a lot of things we saw driving by that I just really really like to see and I feel like it would be nice to sort of be like oh my god that mountain in the distance looks so beautiful and I feel like it would be nice if my boyfriend can appreciate it the same way that I do instead of just being like oh yeah that's cool you know when you get a when you get a response like that it kind of dampens your mood a little bit because you know they don't care and that they're just responding to you and I just think it would be nice if my boyfriend had the same level of appreciation. So if he would just be like, oh my god, do you see that flower over there? It looks beautiful, it's like fully bloomed, you know, I don't know what the hell they would say, but I would just appreciate it also, or I would just be like, wow, I didn't notice that, thank you for pointing that out to me. And that's just something I feel like would be 
good to help me want to make those exclamations because I would like to tell my boyfriend that something is visually beautiful to me. I don't want to have to keep that to myself if possible. I would like to share that with them and not get a monotone response back. I would say, this is actually something I didn't write down, but I just thought of it now. I would say that living a healthy lifestyle is pretty important to me because I would say that dominantly I live a healthy lifestyle. I like to eat healthy. I like to do fitness. I like to hike and I would like it. I think it would be important to me for my boyfriend to do the same because I think I do notice that if someone eats too much junk food, then it does kind of, you know, bug me in my mind. And I think if I was around that too much, then I wouldn't be too pleased with it. So I would love to, you know, work out together it would be great. And it would be awesome if they push me to work harder or they can give me tips if they were knowledgeable about that stuff. So that is another one that I would like. Okay, so the last topic that I want to cover is pretty obvious what I don't like. What I don't like is someone who lacks the motivation to change their life when they are unhappy with something. And that might sound like it's obvious, oh, if you don't like something, you most likely would go and do something about it. But I don't think that's very true for most people because it takes a lot of effort to take the steps towards changing something. And I feel like you need that continued motivation. You might think that you want to do something one day, but as days pass on, you could lose that motivation and go back to what you're comfortable with or where you were before and not feel like you want to put more effort into something else. So even something similar to career, for example, when someone's unhappy in their career, I think a lot of people tend to feel like they're trapped or they can't do anything about it. And there's always something you can do. And it would be nice to be around someone that's motivated to change something or do something about it rather than just wallowing and just allowing it to happen. So that is a very, very big one for me, I would say. Because honestly, there have been times where maybe I would get back in touch with someone that I knew in the past and they would be in a rut. And I realized that it's very hard for me to relate or feel motivated to converse with someone like that because I think you can tell by what they say or their state of mind that they tend to feel like, I think it can be very easy to notice that they don't have confidence in themselves. And I feel like sometimes when you interact with someone like that too much, it can be draining because you might need to lift them up a lot or hopefully not but they might expect you to and I think that is not a very good dynamic and eventually it could probably crumble. This one is pretty similar but I definitely don't like if they're not ambitious. I think that from now on I would like to date someone that has a good career because I've never experienced that and I feel like it would be a big difference for me because that would be one aspect that I wouldn't even have to worry about. And I would just know that they're doing well at their job or they're good at what they do and that they will just keep progressing along that path without too much complication, I would hope. I mean, people will job change and they will leave companies and stuff like that. But hopefully, whenever there's an issue that seems to arise, I would like to think that they would tackle it instead of just sitting back and complaining about it and not doing anything about it. This one I don't think I've ever brought up very much, but maybe people would like to know that about me. But what I don't like is someone who drinks a lot or does any drugs. So my second boyfriend woke me up to how strongly I don't like drugs. And I think it's very obvious why that is. It's because I've never been around it and when we were growing up, we were pretty much taught that drugs are bad. Throughout my entire upbringing, I've never, been on, I've never been around drugs. I've never done drugs. I didn't ever hang around people who did them. And honestly, even something like smoking, the only person that ever did that around me was my grandpa and he did eventually quit. So 
I was just never around any of that. I didn't have any exposure to it. I had no idea what certain drugs smelled like. He smoked a lot of weed. And when I first met him and we were mostly friends, I was aware of the fact, but I wasn't aware how uncomfortable it would make me feel to be around it or to be around him after he had smoked. So eventually it started becoming a problem and it started to eat away at me and nag me and just it was making me so uncomfortable and the thing is he said that if i never tried it i can't have an opinion on it and that actually stuck with me for a very long time afterwards because nowadays i can see what he was trying to say but i still think that someone can have an opinion on something they can choose to think a certain way even if they've never tried something, as long as you know they're not trying to push their beliefs onto other people because I feel like if you were doing that, you probably need to have more proof or more experience to back it up. But in terms of my experience, when he said that, I actually tried it twice for him. And I sometimes wished I didn't because I had no interest in it and even both times when I tried it I honestly didn't feel anything but it became such a problem between the both of us and I just didn't want to be around it. I honestly think he wasn't even doing it for the right reasons. He wasn't really doing much at the time. He never graduated college. He was doing a bit of work but it wasn't anything that you could really build a future off of so i think he was kind of just self-medicating on weed and i did want to break up with him a few times because of that reason but he always told me that that's not a good enough reason and unfortunately i believed him at the time so that was my first and last time of dating someone who did drugs and I'm not saying weed is a terrible thing I can see that a lot of people enjoy it and it also has its good medicinal uses but for me personally I recognize that I don't like being around drugs I don't really like it if people use it I think it might be possible for me to be friends with someone that does but I still think it might be hard so I might just prefer to stay away from it overall and I don't think that is a stance I can just change on a whim. So I think I would feel most comfortable if there was none of that going on. Honestly, even smoking, I've realized, makes me pretty uncomfortable to be around. Yeah, I've noticed the past few times I've ever been around is smoking or vaping. I'm just not a fan. I don't know. I feel uneasy when I'm around that stuff. So I would prefer to just not be around it and I would say that that's a pretty big deal for me. I'd say that somebody who is extroverted probably would never mesh well with someone like me because I think that the fact that you're extroverted already clashes with a lot of the stuff that I'm interested in. And I feel like extroverted people might take it very seriously where they want you to be good friends with their friends and I would not really be a fan of that I, I can see why people want their girlfriend and their friends to all get along and be good buddies and maybe be a group of friends and whatnot, but I've mentioned before, I don't care for groups of friends. I always like to just one-on-one -on -one with people whenever I go out. I like to focus on one person. If I happen to be very good friends with everyone in that group, then that's fine, but that just hasn't really happened in the past, so for now, I just don't think that would be a good scenario for me. Um, I don't really like the feeling of obligation of attending an outing just because your significant other is going out with friends. I don't think that's really something I would enjoy. So I think I would really prefer someone who does not pressure me into those situations would be completely fine if I'm not friends with any of their friends and just understands that there can be that separation and it can be healthy. I don't think I've talked about this one very often, but mainly it's because I feel like it can be a sensitive topic. And I will just say it 
briefly. I don't really want to delve into it too deeply because it's simple. I don't like religion. I don't really think I could be around someone who is super religious. And I'd say maybe a friend, if they're religious, that could be okay as long as they don't really mention it around me or talk about it too much because I am really not a fan. Um, I'd say in a significant other, I can't have religion involved because it would probably drive me crazy. I don't want to be around any of that stuff. I like to keep it at a distance. So yeah, that's something that I would not really be lenient about. And the good thing about that is that I've realized the past few years that I've come across a fair amount of people that don't like it either. And that gives me hope that you can come across a fair amount of people that have that belief. So I don't think I am really narrowing down the population too much. I don't think I've really had this specifically happen to me, but this is just something that I have a preference for and I definitely do not want someone who will expect traditional female things out of you like cooking, cleaning, child rearing, child caring, any of that. Um, if I want to do it, then I'll do it, but I do not want it to be something that they expect because I don't really believe in any of that. I don't really think that just because you're a female that you should be doing those roles all the time. I know that it used to be that way, but nowadays it's certainly different. So I feel like it would probably make me pretty unhappy and potentially angry if that stuff was expected of me. Especially nowadays when I see that stuff in movies. If I see a man coming home from work and he's doesn't have dinner ready for him, he gets angry about stuff like that, fuck that, I'm not dealing with that. Alright, this is the last one I will mention. This one's pretty straightforward, but I do think that my point of view might be a little bit different and perhaps hard for some people to accept. I don't know, we'll see. So I talked about this briefly when I was streaming once, but I will go into more detail here because I don't think I've really mentioned it much in a video, but I don't want someone that is jealous or can be controlling. So in the past, I've had my second boyfriend be pissed off at me when someone online would send me a message he was not pleased with and he was on my account at the time so he sent back a very mean message and that was not cool with me but i was definitely a bit more of a submissive person back then not fully understanding you know what is okay and what isn't but aside from situations like that i just realized this is pretty much similar to what i mentioned earlier about the whole one-on-one -on -one thing i like to have outings where it's one-on-one. -on -one. That's just the way that it's been for me these past few years if I ever managed to. So I would like to not have to stop doing that just because I'm in a relationship. And of course, some of these one-on-ones might be with a man. And I think a lot of people tend to have a huge issue with a girlfriend meeting up one-on-one -on -one with someone of the opposite gender. But the thing is, I know myself and just because they have a dick doesn't mean we're gonna cheat. This is something that actually really stands out for me because actually my friend's wedding that I'm going to next month, he was actually someone that met up with me for dinner or a movie several times after we graduated from college. And at the time, he had a girlfriend and the fact that he was able to meet up with me for a meal or for a movie and not having it not be a big deal at all between his girlfriend made me respect her so much. Because when we met up, it was literally so harmless. There was nothing that was gonna happen. We were always just there joking around, having a conversation and catching up. So I feel like if you trust your significant other, and as long as whoever they're meeting up with is a respectful individual, then 
there should not have to be restrictions for stuff like that, especially because of a specific gender type of thing. So I know that several other situations when I would bring up the subject of meeting up with a guy, they would have a big issue or they would be like, oh no, you can't meet up, you can't meet someone off the internet that you know from wow, that's a guy or something just because of what they might be thinking and that I feel like is kind of silly because you can't control what somebody else thinks and even if they're thinking a certain way as long as they don't act on it I think that's okay yeah the thought might be there but I just think that that's not a good enough reason to control um, your significant other I don't want to have to ever feel like I'm being controlled if I'm if I'm in a relationship um, maybe I uh, maybe my views are a little bit too oh I want freedom even though I'm in a relationship type of thing but I do hope that you can reach that balance despite it all because I just really want to be carefree I just know I have that personality I want to still feel like I can do a lot of what I normally do even when I'm still in a relationship so I don't think that's too much to ask for but I do think that maybe once I get into a healthy relationship and I can see like different sides maybe if he went out one-on-one -on -one with a bunch of females at a time then maybe I can see why it would bother me but it really depends I really think it depends on meeting up with someone that is respectful and just an overall good person because I think if that is in the picture then the significant other just has less to worry about but if you're meeting up with some dumb bitch that tries to flirt with her boyfriend or tries to sit on his lap or tries to touch him and stuff then obviously that's a problem because I have seen so many posts like that on reddit before on the relationship subreddit where some girls like my boyfriend's girlfriend does stuff that's inappropriate am I right to be angry about it? yes and I feel like your boyfriend is probably a piece of shit if he's not telling this friend to stop doing this inappropriate behavior they're probably not telling them to stop because they like it and if they like it, you should not date this person so I feel like those situations are very clear cut but I feel like if you're around good people if you're around good people that respect boundaries respect relationships and everything then you should not have a problem meeting up one-on-one -on -one with someone of the opposite gender that's what I have to say about that and this is actually the third session that I've been recording this video so I'm pretty tired and that is actually everything that I wrote down that I wanted to talk about I feel like relationships is such a deep topic that what I just said is not even enough to scratch the surface but I would love more ideas because I find it very hard to pick up on very interesting aspects that people might want to hear discussed or know about me so really I encourage you to leave a comment about a certain topic you might want me to talk about and perhaps if there's enough different ideas coming in I will put those ideas together and I can make another video but in the meantime I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video that you learned more about me thank you for watching this video and for the few of you that helped provide ideas for this video thank you very much and i will see you guys in the next one